Hey everybody, welcome back to our neck of the woods. So today's video that you guys have been waiting for, one, it's gonna be the Q&A video, uh, first uh, interaction kind of between us and you guys, and also announcing the three winners of our equipment. Uh, to say a big thank you from us to you, uh, that you guys helped us reach our 4,000 hours of watch time in, what was it, 122 days or something? It was fast. Yeah, so first off, um, introductions. I don't think I've ever said my name in any videos that one person pointed out like a month ago, and uh, I think they're 100% correct. So my name is Scott, and this is my wife, Erin. Erin. Uh, again, we moved out here onto this property. Uh, it's gonna be three years come June, July? In June. June, that we've been out here. So roughly two years before starting the build, getting the property ready, cutting down 100 trees that were in this area that the house and basement are, um, building that shed over there so we could start storing all of our equipment and stuff in. And then when we sold our house, we bought a camper, got the camper life set up out here, and that's kind of where we've been at uh, today. All right, so before we get to the Q&A, um, I did want to say what we've spent so far on this build. Uh, a couple people have been asking for that and uh, so far, not to leave you guys hanging, but right now we've got about $122,500 into everything that you see here. That is all of the Fox blocks, the basement slab, the garage slab, the zip paneling and the garage is sheathed in or uh, studded in new dura concrete and everything up here is poured we've got 16,000 something in trusses out in the front yard uh, but that's not going to be what you guys pay um, every place is going to be different so for example we've got thirteen thousand seven hundred dollars total into the build before basically we ever even broke ground so really what you see right here now is only about $108,000. Um, that 13,700 included engineering, um, the drilling of the well, the well permit, the septic permit, the septic design, uh, the zoning permit and building permit, if I didn't already say that. So uh, where you live, it's gonna be different for everybody, but go ahead and roughly take off $13,000 for everything that you see here drops us down to about 108,000 and that's what we have in it. Now, that's not even including building materials. That's me literally going to Home Depot every five minutes and just paying $5 for a box of screws or something. Um, I've got it pretty much down to the T here. Um, Randall, I've paid him several times on like a $250 a day, like labor rate to help me. Um, he charged me $2,100, I think, to pour the basement slab and like $1,500 to pour the garage slab, plus paying out all of his guys. Um, we've got probably two or three grand in equipment that we've rented. Uh, each time we've had an excavator or something out here um, and a, like a compactor that we've used. So it's gonna be different where you live, but uh, so far getting to this stage, I don't think 108 grand is that bad, especially since we already have the trusses. Once we spend another four or $5,000, like on all the sheathing and the uh, uh, peel and stick ice uh, guard and the uh, waterproofing that goes on to the sheathing for the roof and everything, and will be kind of dried in at this stage. Um, that's not bad. We had a uh, ICF builder kind of get to this stage. I believe he did have the windows and doors in, which we know those are another 30,000 already. And um, I think siding too. He quoted us $280,000 to get to this point right here. And the fact that we're only 108 plus another, like I said, five and 30 for the windows and doors, um, we are well under his quote. So that is not bad to do this on your own and automatically start to have equity into a house. All right, so first most popular question, what do we got? I don't know that it's the most popular, but people want to know, what do you guys do for a living? Uh, so I think I've mentioned this before for me, and I don't know if I've mentioned it to her, but we are both registered nurses. Um, I'm a trauma nurse. I used to work at just a regular ER, then started doing traveling at trauma centers. And then I came back to Ohio and uh, I work for an organization where I'm in their flex pool, which is why I have the ability to build my own house. I basically sign up on a day when I want to work. They tell me which ER I'm going to go to. 
and uh, I go there and work a shift. And uh, in fact, one of the ERs in our organization, it's a trauma level two center. Um, I'm certified trauma there, but it's probably one of the most busy. They actually said it, they told me this, I didn't verify it, but um, one of the busiest hospitals actually in the country. I think the first year that they were open for just traumas alone, I think they saw over 2,200 traumas in one year. And in this year, even with COVID, where we died for two or three months, I think we're gonna crush that 2,200 even. So uh, that's what I do, and you? I'm a nurse, but I work at a surgery center. It's an orthopedic surgery center. So all of our patients are outpatient. Everybody's coming in healthy. They're waking up and they're going home. I love it. Um, I do recovery there. My schedule is not quite as flexible as Scott's is, but I do 410s. So I almost always have a three-day weekend, which is how I like it set up. Um, it's a very good job. We both like being nurses. Yeah, good money, good flexibility, and uh, kind of rewarding careers. So yeah, what's next? Why did you choose ICF? Yeah, why not? Um, no, wait, he had to convince me because I didn't really know anything about ICF when he suggested it. And I was instantly just thinking, no. So it took some convincing. And why did you want it so bad? Well, one, uh, user friendly. Um, you guys saw me do the garage. Obviously that's a little bit, not exactly how you'd build a house if you had a team and working with 12 foot tall two by eights is a little difficult for one person. But uh, to knocking out a bunch of studs and stuff like that, um, I thought ICF was just a heck of a lot easier. I mean, I can get the basement and this whole first floor with all these windows and doors cut out uh, in a day or two by myself. Um, but really it came down to me not wanting to spend more money in the future. So the fact that you can have an ICF house where um, on some ICF uh, Facebook pages, people have talked about how good they are where somebody lost their heat or their electricity in the middle of winter and they went six days in I think it was Michigan or Wisconsin six days no power no heat the house lost three degrees in temperature Crazy. that's insane um, you can get that with a studded house especially if you're using zip R and you're spray foaming first so you're basically locking in the stud to the zip R then you can put in bat insulation and then drywall and then of course on the outside you have to take more steps with uh, taping and uh, sill sealing and mastic and all that sort of stuff to lock that house down. Basically exactly what I'm doing with the garage. But when you put up a, 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 a ICF panel and pour concrete in it, you're already 100% airtight. There's nothing you have to do. Air's not going through four to six inches of solid concrete. Um, the other day I posted in another video where we had like a big storm come through. There actually was a touchdown tornado in Ohio about 10 or 15 miles that way coming directly in this direction. I like strength. I don't want something to break down. Um, an ICF house is essentially bulletproof. You're not gonna get anything through like a two by four flying 250 miles an hour. It's not going through four inches of concrete and rebar. So um, there's that. Um, there's the sound quality. Uh, concrete is 100% soundproof. You're gonna get some sound coming through windows and doors, but uh, I can be out in the garage. The laundry room has a door to it, and you've got the door going to the garage. I can guarantee you I can be out in that garage hammering, grinding, doing whatever I want, and Erin can probably be sitting here in the kitchen and she won't hear a thing. You're not getting sound through concrete and six inches of foam, basically. So. Um, that's really it. Uh, I don't think the price was that bad. Um, Especially I, now that the price of lumber is going up. Yeah. I see yeah. so many more people like on the Facebook groups for ICF and they're talking about with the price of lumber going up that it's almost breaking even. It's the same. And when we first got into this, there were so many people that questioned us. Um, you know, why would you want to do that? It's going to cost you so much more. But they're just saying it because they don't really know how much more it costs. It's not costing us that much more than what a stick built house would have cost us. Yeah, and I did an, al an analysis a few years ago. I did the ICF for like an eight foot wall, 40 feet long. And um, I compared that to just two by four with just drywall and OSB on the outside. I compared it to two by six, two by eight, uh, zip R, again, regular sheathing. 
and this was probably two years ago. It was about seven times more expensive than an ICF house, but um, overall, like for an entire house, like I said, roughly like 40 feet, 40 feet, 40 feet box, eight foot tall. Um, seven times more expensive just in that, it only ended up being like three grand more. When you're spending a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars on a house, what's an extra three grand? Yeah, saying seven times more expensive. Oh my God, that's so much more. But on an entire house, it doesn't add up to be that much. And again, that was only a two by four house. Two by four houses aren't even code anymore. Um, most pink insulation, like bad insulation that you can put in a two by four cavity, that's only an R13. That's not even legal in zone five anymore. You have to have an R15. So you'd have to get rid of the uh, pink insulation and go to something more expensive anyway, like a uh, rock wool. You'd have to put OS or uh, zip panels on anyway with zip R to get up to an R15. So no matter what, you'd have to spend more money than that. And by the time I did an analysis of a two by eight house with zip R, an R30 in the cavity, which gives you like over an R40 total within the cavity and then like an R20 or so at the two by eight stud location, you're almost at ICF anyway. So why not just spend the ICF and get that strength, uh, that soundproofing, that already water and kind of airtight proofing and uh, just go with that instead. Next question. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to build it yourself? I think I already answered that. Uh, the, Money. <laughs> yeah, we, we went through nine builders. Um, before I really knew anything about ICF, we were just asking regular builders, which I, in Ohio, they're doing two by sixes. Um, I just didn't feel comfortable with just a regular two by six house with blown in cellulose and not using zip R on the outside. In fact, everyone around here still uses Tyvek and regular uh, OSB sheathing. So you're not even getting that airtight and watertight anyway. Not that, I mean, I'm not really knocking on Tyvek that much, but Tyvek is not up to the standard of if you have a rubber waterproofing on the outside, taping all of your seams up and around for your paneling. It's just not gonna be the same. So, um, um, and some of the prices were ridiculous. Like for example, uh, around here, I've told you guys all how much I spent on concrete already. Um, this company wanted to go from an eight foot basement to a nine foot basement. So I calculated that at like an extra like half a yard of concrete or something, like not even that much for like a little uh, ranch house. Uh, they increased the price $10,000 for one foot of concrete where it was going to be about $800 worth of concrete. Like you're insane. I'm not paying 10 grand for a yard or two of concrete. Uh, that only costs a couple hundred bucks. That's that's insane. But uh, their reasoning is, oh, well, the Simmons or Sims panels, whatever you call them, that you put up when you regularly pour a basement, well, they have to get a panel that's a foot taller. Well, that's not any more labor or anything. So they were out. And then again, when we finally found somebody to give us a quote out of nine builders, which was one ICF home builder out of, how many ICF builders did we see? Just two? Just two. Um, yeah, they came in at uh, almost two hundred eighty, two hundred ninety thousand dollars, and uh, yeah, wasn't wasn't happening just for a rough in, just for a dry in. That that's insane. We weren't gonna do it. So, have you ever built a house before? Mm, me, no. Um, obviously, I built my shed from scratch, build all my own trusses. You know, build a jig on the floor. But you've helped build homes. Um, you have some background. Yeah, so along with being a nurse, um, I went through police academy, I've been a lifeguard and a pizza delivery, I've worked for HVAC, um, did some electrical work with a lighting company, changing out ballasts and stuff throughout schools and businesses. So like I said before, I've got a little bit in everything. I think the biggest project I did was, man, probably when I was like 12 years old, we helped my dad and the entire family cut off the roof of one of our family members' houses, build on a second story, put trusses and roofing on top of there. So within just that project alone, I got framing experience, roofing experience, um, asphalt shingle experience. So I've pretty much been a handyman, kind of like doing stuff like that my entire life, but no, never a home builder, never doing stuff by myself. Do you regret building it yourself? Do you want me to answer it? Yeah, at times, yeah. Yeah, there are moments where I could cry and I think, 
I want to go back to our stupid little condo. This is ridiculous. I want out. I'm tired of living in a 300 square foot camper. Um, but then I see numbers like when he showed me how much we've saved up to this point versus where our quote was to get us up to this point. And it just changes everything instantly. And I think, well, hell yeah, that's worth it. And in the end, it, it really is worth it. As long as everything goes according to plan for the most part and we end up where we want to be, I will look back and say, yeah, that was worth it. But this isn't easy. We for sure have our moments where <laughs> We, not always on camera <laughs> it's always off camera where we just want to kill each other um, it's just not easy to build your own home especially when most days he's here by himself while I'm at work it's hard it's hard yeah so it's definitely hard but um, I don't know uh, because I'm not working as much because I have more flexibility to be here and work um, I'm looking at like it this is my retirement so the four or five months that I've been building this house and I haven't been working as much and I'm not putting money like into my 401k and stuff, um, I'm putting my 401k into this house. So the fact that we're already, what did we say? 108, 30, let's say like 140 grand in the house already. We've already saved 140 grand. There's no way on earth I could have already put 140 grand in five months into like my 401k. So I've just gained that 141 by not working as much that I've already got it here in equity. And if we're going to sell this property one day and, um, you know, if we retire, like when we're going to die or whatever, we'll have the equity uh, to give to someone else that it can go into our retirement if we do need something smaller. Um, because like I said, we are a raised ranch. We're almost seven feet off the ground. There may be the day that comes where we can't come up seven feet through the garage, the front door or the back door without, you know, one of those little chair lift thingies. So that's our retirement money right there that we can sell this house and property that I'm investing as much as I can and quickly as I can into it now to kind of get that out of the way. All right, little adjustment there, sun's getting too bright. What's next? What has been the most challenging aspect of your build? I don't know, actually. Um, I feel like everything takes forever. And it's actually funny. It feels like, like at this point, it feels like I've done nothing to the house. I look at it and it's like nothing's been done. But it's like, I can't remember. It took me, you know, a, a week of hell to dig out the footers and, and get the, uh, the footer bracing in before the concrete was poured. And then it's like, before you can even comprehend what just happened, it's like you're already putting up the ICF blocks. And then it's like, oh, I got to get all this bracing up before we can pour the walls in the basement. Mm -hmm. And then it seems like I did nothing to this floor, but this floor sucked hanging 72 trusses and hammering in, um, what is that, 144 uh, brackets uh, where each truss gets bolted into. Um, I mean, hell, I'm still feeling that. Uh, I'm getting like some sort of crazy tendonitis in my elbow. This third finger doesn't work in the morning anymore. The tendon is like super rock solid from like holding a hammer and stuff. It takes me a couple hours to get it loosened back up. Uh, using my drill has permanently gave me a bruise and made my skin like scaly here where I'm constantly pushing down on a drill or using the impact. Uh, it's tearing up my body a little bit, but when I'm done, I think everything will loosen back up and be back to you're normal. You're young enough, you'll be fine. But it's just like going through all this hard work, you're onto another project and it's like you don't even remember how bad that last project was. And it's, uh, I, I don't know, it just, it, it's, it seems like it's going fast, but then again, I need to eventually sit back and realize one day, wow, that was like a month where I did that project. That sucked. Yeah. It seemed like it took forever. And then it's like, oh, it's done and over with. It's like, it feels like it's nothing now. And I don't know, it's weird. You don't have time to sit back and look at it and think, oh, look what I did. We got all that accomplished because it's just constantly on to the next thing. You just have to keep moving. We talked to my aunt and uncle about this when we stopped at their place in Georgia yesterday. Um, I said, I remember the day that we were, you know, spreading sand before we poured the slab in the basement. And it was just so difficult and so frustrating, just physically hard. It was the only reason it was difficult. And now I think, oh yeah, I already forgot about that. <laughs> it's just always something that you have to move on to next. Mm -hmm. 
timing might be the most challenging aspect, I guess. Yeah, especially when you're working alone. What has, no, we just did that question. Did you use an architect and how did you find an ICF engineer? Uh, no architect. Um, we talked to a few builders. Uh, one of the ones that never got back to us ghosted us and never even gave us a quote after six months. Mm -hmm. um, he had made the suggestion of if you want to keep a house cheaper, you know, keep like a roof line simple. So that's where I was like, you know what, I'm going to make a house just with a roof line like this. She talked me into adding then the front porches that are going to be going, you know, the opposite way where there'll be, you know, two valleys going down each side. But uh, I just kept it simple. Uh, that's why the house is a rectangle, and that's why the garage is a, a rectangle too. Um, Plus, architects were so much more expensive. Everybody I know that's used an architect around here was paying five to six thousand for those plans. And what did we pay in engineering? Well, we looked into we looked into one architect that I personally called and talked to, and I think he said around twenty two hundred dollars. Um, and I was like, you know what, I'll be the architect. I can figure this out. But we, I think I just, I don't even remember. I, uh, one of the, like Angie's list or something. I can't remember. Uh, I, just a local guy. And, and that was a hard thing too. That, that's something else. That I think I called uh, a couple engineers at that point to try and get an appointment and see how much they would charge. And this young guy, probably, I think he's younger than me. Um, and I just turned 37 the other day when I hit my birthday. Um, He's probably five, ten years younger than me. Super ambitious, uh, eager to get started. Thinks like me, like, yeah, you can do, you know, this much concrete or this much thickness or whatever. But you know what? Let's instead of using a four, three thousand psi, let's use a four thousand psi. Let's spend a little bit more and do stuff like that. And uh, I met him in person, and it just worked out. And um, he, he's the only thing that we really had to pay for. I gave him my ideas and drawings. And uh, he put it to an engineered spec, and that's where we came out. So he really was an ICF, but he did live in Alaska for a little bit, and his dad was up there too. He actually had ICF builder experience because if you're going to build in Alaska, ICF's going to be uh, what you're going to want to use. I think not only for earthquakes and stuff, but it's so cold up there that uh, there are some ICF manufacturers where um, instead of just having two set panels, they use a clip system where you can put one panel on the inside and then if you buy longer and longer clips you can keep putting in ICF panels to the outside. Uh, I think it's quick lock ICF. I think you can get up to like an R60 on an ICF versus an R24 and he had experience with that so he fell in love when I'm like I want to build an ICF in Ohio so it, again just worked out with us. Where do you get your heavy equipment? Is it expensive? Uh, around here, it's two miles down the road. Um, I'm sure you guys seen it in the videos. It's called Ohio Rental. Um, they, uh, I don't think they charge, I don't think the price is too bad. Um, I think Sunbelt or something. I don't know if they're national. They may just be in Ohio. I think it's called Sunbelt. Mm -hmm. They're a rental place too. I think they're a little bit more expensive. Um, they're not as close either. No, which would probably increase the cost of delivery if it's not something that I could pick up with my truck and trailer. But uh, I don't think it's too bad. That excavator we dug for the basement was 34,000 pounds. I think it was four something a day. Uh, that 12,000 pounder I just got was only about three something a day. Um, everything else, the vibrators, the compactors, they pretty much have everything. Um, I don't think they're too bad. And when I say to people, who are dropping stuff off and I tell them that's what I'm paying, I think every single person has been shocked. So to me, that sounds like their pricing is actually pretty good, so. Why did you do a basement rather than a slab? I can answer it <laughs> because I said so. <laughs> it was just never gonna be a slab for me. I like a basement. I like a full finished basement and I understand that we're not gonna have that right away. Um, probably just, you know, money issues. Most people finish the basement last. Um, regardless, I don't care. I wanted a full basement. I've had people say, yeah, but it's only like five feet below grade. I don't care. When you're down there, it still feels like a basement. Um, plus with the tall ceilings, it's extra nice. He pushed for a slab for over a year, I think. Um, and for him, it was mainly a money thing. He kept telling me, think of the tens of thousands of dollars that we could save <laughs> if you would give up this damn basement. And I just couldn't, and I was not gonna cave on it. 
Well, it was at least I got 40, a damn basement now. It was at least 40 grand, I think, because obviously if you build a slab, you don't have the trusses, the subfloor. You're still paying for concrete, whether it's a slab or a basement. Um, obviously, you would eliminate it every single ICF Fox block for the basement and all that rebar. But um, he I don't said, know. I'll, bu it, I'll build, you, build you a two story. You know, I'll give you another level on top to make up for what you're missing in the basement if we build a slab, and it's just not the same. I had to have the basement. Well, it, it, to me, it feels like a two story. Again, that back corner is the lowest, it's five feet below grade to the bottom of the footer. And since our footers are nine and a half inches, you need to take nine and a half off of five foot. That's actually what you're standing on. Actually, it's less than that because you're standing on two inches of foam and four inches of concrete. So you're actually not that far below grade at all. Um, but yeah, it's Ohio. Everyone has basements here. Um, we Again, we're, we have tornadoes here at occasions. So to have be even just a little bit below grade, that's a safety issue. I think it's more appealing for potential resale too. Well, to yeah, because uh, outside diameter of the house is 1966 square feet. So you've got 1966 first floor and 1966 basement. Again, outside diameter, it drops a little bit because the, these walls are so thick. But um, yeah, I guess you could sit back and say, we've got almost a 4,000 square foot house as opposed to, you know, 1900 so i guess i guess it works it's more more a lot more room for activities yeah so many activities i thought front drains were something you only need if you have water issues why did you put one in because we got water issues <laughs> uh we're on a flat farming type area here water likes to sit there's not really any major runoffs but uh this property does taper from front to back i think i mentioned this before just in the 240 feet that we're off from the road, from the road to the front of the camper is a 44 inch drop. Uh, it doesn't look like that, but continue that another probably 400 feet that way. The, pro the water does go that way, um, but it did sit here. It does sit here in the spring and stuff. And um, I wanted a killer French drain that was never gonna fail. I've seen some, uh, fine home buildings where they put in like two four inch french drains i decided to go a single six so it can flow a heck of a lot of water really fast but um it's just what you do uh, i'm i can still grade the crap out of the house so any water that does hit doesn't really ever get down to the french drain it'll grade off out into the yard but it's really just a safety issue i wanted the basement bulletproof watertight 100 percent for the life of this home and uh six inch french drain is how you get it done again with waterproofing drainage stone the uh dimple membrane and that's how you get it done so why no common seams we did somebody asked that on one of the YouTube videos. Oh, and I, I clarified it in a comment. Um, I was putting up the ICF or the Fox blocks fast, but there was a, a common seam. And actually right there where you see all those uh, little C's, that was a common seam there on the uh, new Dura. Um, and there was one above that doorway over there, but I did engineer the house and figure out all the block panel lengths and stuff and all of the corners, both on the short legs and the long legs that I wanted to avoid that as much as possible. So I blocked this house out 12 blocks long and eight blocks wide with the corners. And uh, they fell where you didn't need a common seam, except for again, up here where the new Dura was different from the, flo the Fox. And um, uh, that one in the basement for some reason, just because it wasn't 100%, but it came back together where I didn't need them going up more. but. Okay, this there is was. the popular question. What? Everybody has to know, where do you get your bracing? Uh, so I mentioned this before again. So this bracing, I know everyone has asked me this, it's called giraffe. Um, I looked online for many, many places. Giraffe came up. They actually said they rent, but then I called them and they really didn't. Uh, they wanted you to more or less buy the bracing and then sell it back to them. I don't know, it was it was weird. It's been a long time since I looked at this, but uh, 
Giraffe gave me the number of a guy who had just bought a bunch. And they're like, he's in Ohio, actually. Uh, gave me his phone number, and that is Brian. That's who you've seen in some of the videos, and who I've mentioned has come out here and even helped me pour on the days. Um, he's local. He bought a bunch of this stuff. He rents it out. Uh, the 10 footers, he charges $10 a week. The garage, I had those eight footers. Those are $8 a week. Um, he charged me like $100 to bring them on out here. Um, and again, I paid him, I think he charged me 150 bucks for the day to help be actually a laborer to pour all this stuff. So good guy, but uh, that's what it is. It, it, it's just a local guy that I ended up getting contact in though uh, through Giraffe. So if you call Giraffe and they may do the same in your area, that's uh, what might, you might be going with too, so. Why are you using radiant heat? Isn't that outdated? I don't think so. Um, I know 100 years ago when forced induction uh, wasn't a, uh, or forced air wasn't a thing, you had those cast iron radiators sitting below a window that water would go through down in the basement. I think when they say it's outdated, that's like, you know, you're paying some guy to go into your house like every day, bringing wood or coal, shoveling it in a furnace or a boiler and, and maintaining that. But in 2020, you've got boilers that do everything themselves that are electronically monitoring every zone that are turning on that specific pump for that zone, heating that up to your comfort. Um, I mean, the technology's through the roof. Uh, somebody did say that it's outdated, but uh, no, absolutely not. Um, Personally, I haven't done a whole lot of research into this, but to me, it just kind of makes sense. I think forced air causes more uh, issues, and it's obviously what every home in America uses. I don't like the fact of your filter not getting changed out every so months, and then you're force blowing all of your own uh, skin cells and your cat's dandruff and dogs and everything constantly blowing out through the house. You're just breathing in that air. Um, building new houses also aren't really 100% safe. You've got off-gassing of paints and uh, glues and uh, everything else that you're using. Um, I don't like the idea of blowing that all around. So when you have a house that's not sucking in air through a return, blowing it back out through a filter, I, I don't think it's great. I think no airflow is awesome except for um, an ERV or uh, an HRV that will go in the attic, that will monitor the barometric pressure and the humidity and everything, and it will do the movement of air but it's doing it with the outside properly and safely with massive, like, I mean, the filters on them are like this big and there's usually two of them, like in a V shape. Uh, that is way bigger than your little furnace in your basement that's got a filter that big. Um, and that's bringing in fresh air from the outside when you need it. And it's taking this sealed, crazy sealed house air. It's taking it out and getting it rid of it. So again, you're not getting too much uh, humidity and stuff in your air that's what you need to go with in this day and age. I think, again, I think it's healthier. Uh, Lung-wise, you got kids that keep coming down more and more with asthma in this day and age, and there's already environmental things out there. I would just have, rather have a house that's a lot more um, safer, cleaner, and uh, you're, you're not beating your, your feet constantly being warm. Uh, our little girl cat, uh, Ellie, hates being cold she's a little fluff ball right now um spitz doesn't matter he's the big 20 pounds ginormous uh black and white cat that we have he runs, hot. he runs warm ellie hates being cold she is always curled up in a ball getting on top of your body so her me our feet are going to thank us uh when we finally get to experience radiant heat i don't think there's anything better because heat rises um, radiant takes your entire floor and house starting hot and working its way up so your entire house is one even temperature. If you have forced induction in a house and walk over to your vent, 
it's like 100 degrees over there. But you walk over here, it's 60. It's 70 over there, 80 over there. The temperatures in the air are all different because it's blowing it up and around and circulating through a room. That's not the greatest feeling when eventually you get into a radiant system. That comfort feeling that everything is the same temperature from, again, warmer on your feet, where some people love their feet uh, you know, to be a little bit more toasty, to be comfortable up here where you stand. Now, obviously, radiant may be a little bit different, uh, especially because we're going to have scissor trusses in the house. Sure, 20 feet up at the peak of that scissor truss, it may be a little cold because that heat's got to go 20 feet up and... We don't need it that hot up there. And if you wanted it super hot up there, you'd have to turn that way up, but then your feet are gonna burn and it's gonna be uncomfortable for us down here. But um, I, I don't care what it is 20 feet up there. It's still gonna be in an ICF house that it's gonna be, you know, you're not gonna get icicles, you know, on the peak of the, the drywall in the uh, uh, living room. But um, it just makes for a much more comfortable living environment, I think, and it's safer. Final question. Hmm. When do you think your house will be completely finished? Never. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Uh, the goal was to get dried in by winter. Um, if we can get the trusses on this week um, and then get the sheathing on over the next week or two. I actually did get a quote from a metal uh, roofing installer. He gave me a quote for sheathing, uh, the peel and stick ice and water shield and the uh, kind of under laminate. Um, and then for the actual install of the metal roof, he still owes me one more quote on if they do nothing at all and just ship me literally every piece of L channel, J channel, metal, uh, ridge caps, everything like that. So there's no labor at all. I'm still waiting on that. But um, after we get this dried in and call and get the uh, window and door quote uh, sent out, um, I think we're just going to take our time. I'm thinking at least another two years. Let's be realistic. A hundred percent, maybe, um, livable within probably a year. Uh, I think our county allows a livable space as long as you have, uh, running water, electric, and septic. Probably. I think that would be considered a running no, water. No, what I Kitchen? heard was if you have heat and running water, oh, okay. you can live in it. So yeah, that wouldn't be hard at all. You get a roof on and the windows and doors in, uh, the well's ready to go. We just have to call a company out here and uh, dig the line for the electric. And Aaron's dad's an electrician, so he can help us out with that. Um, but yeah, we can get that done. And, and well, the septic's gonna be a little bit harder because uh, we are using a mound system. I can put in a leaching field, a mound system is gonna be a little bit more difficult, although, when I said in the beginning of this video that I paid for a septic design, um, that was about $1,500 and the guy was really good. It's very detailed. I think me and a couple guys, like my dad, let's say, can follow the plans pretty good. And uh, in my county, I'm allowed to go and take a test and get certified to be a owner installer. And then the health department comes out, verifies it. If something needs changed, it needs changed. But uh, I can't go install a septic system at my neighbor's, but uh, I am technically allowed. Um, but that's going to be, do I pay someone to do the septic or do I do it? Because the mound system is a little bit more tricky and difficult than just a leaching field that runs downhill. So, If any of you guys have any experience with that and you want to drop us a comment and let us know if you think it's something that we should attempt on our own, that'd be great because we haven't really decided on this yet. Yeah, I think I'll at least I can at least do the beginning part. For example, buying a septic tank and putting it out here on the um, uh, south side of the house where that four inch septic sleeve is going through the house or through the basement wall. Um, we could at least pipe that in, put it down into the ground and then just kind of leave the lids on it and backfill it. And then at a later time, figure out where the next pumping station is going to be and how to run the pipes out there and do the mounding and all that stuff. But uh, we can, I can do most of the beginning parts of it, but we'll see. That's it for questions. All right, so that's it for questions. So time for the winners. Giveaway. All righty. So giveaway looks like it is going to be, we're going to be doing a Joby uh, Gorilla Pod. Basically, it just attaches to your cameras when you're vlogging. You can hold it. 
you can attach it to things. The little feet here wrap around trees and poles and everything else. So it just makes it very handy when you're vlogging or you need to set it up on something. We Again, use one and we love it. Yeah, just a cool little gift uh, from us to you guys to helping us reach that halfway monetized state. We're still doing um, good on our subscribers, but I think we're up to almost 650 right now. So we just need a few more. But it looks like who the are the winners? Winners are going to be number one, KK Ann. Uh, haven't verified this on uh, uh, Instagram yet, but KK Ann, hit us up on Instagram, Neck of the Woods 2020. Send us your address. We'll sh ship you one of these out. Uh, the next one, Alex Agala. <laughs> S M A G A L A, Alex, you're winner number two. Again, hit us up on Instagram, Neck of the Woods 2020. And then number three, KK Ann. No, I just said KK oh, Ann. Do it. Edit. Ilica, Ilicus? Ilicus? I L A C U S S. You are also the winner of one of these. Again, Neck of the Woods 2020 on Instagram. Hit us up for your address, and we'll go ahead and ship you that out. That's Isn't it. That it. That's it. All right, guys, that'll wrap this video up here. Uh, hopefully I can get this out tonight. And uh, please, again, hit us up, like, subscribe, see us on Instagram, message us. Any more comments that you have for us, we can do another one of these at a later time. And again, stuff like this, uh, if we get up into that monetized state at like 1,000 subscribers, 10,000, if it just keeps going from here, we'll more be giveaways. more than glad to do more giveaways. And uh, uh, thank you guys for all that you're doing for us. So. See you later. So we'll see you later. Take care.